All right, we've been working on understanding the difference between procedure statements and data statements. And in the previous tutorial, uh, what we did was we uh, used a procedure statement called PROC PRINT, which basically, again, procedure statements are statements that are pre-specified by SAS. They're procedures recognized by SAS. And then we also uh, used a data statement to create a whole bunch of new variables. You can see in this line, these lines of code, that I created a new SAS data set called data2. Data2 consists of an old SAS data set called work.data1 which consisted of a CSV file that contains a financial statement uh, financial statement accounts for about 450 firms from CompuStat in 2019. And what I did inside of this data step is I created a whole bunch of uh, variables profitability ratios, return on equity, return on assets, profit margin. I created liquidity ratios, current ratios, quick ratios, cash ratios for each firm. Uh, I created debt ratios, debt to equity, debt to assets, and efficiency ratios, total asset turnover and fixed asset turnover. So what I want to do in this uh, tutorial is I want to talk about some of the common procedures that we can use to analyze some of this data that we just created from the financial statements. So once I've uh, I've inside a data step created the variables that are important and interesting to me. What I can do now is use a whole bunch of SAS procedures to analyze this data. For instance, I can use the most common uh, procedure that I, that I use is uh, PROC means. So this is a procedure statement. Uh, I calculate the means. I basically create statistics for these variables uh, that I've created uh, uh, in the previous data statement. So I say PROC means data equals data2, and I can specify what statistics I want. I want to look at the mean, maybe the standard deviation, and you notice that when I type in mean and STD, uh, these, things, uh, these things turn blue, so I know that, that SAS is recognizing them as part of this procedure statement. I might want to look at the minimum. Uh, I might want to look at the first percentile, the fifth percentile, the tenth percentile, maybe. I might want to look at the 25th percentile. Again, all of these things are populating blue, so that means SAS is recognizing them. I might want to look at the median, the 75th percentile, the 90th percentile, the 95th percentile, the 99th percentile, and the maximum. Okay, so basically I'm looking at the distribution, the statistical distribution of the 450 firms, all of these various uh, variables. So, so maybe I want to start with profitability. So after I say PROC means data equals data2 and specify the statistics that I want to look at, then I say the variables that I want to look at are ROE, ROA, and profit margin. Again, I close my line of code. Maybe I should, if I'm calling these lines of code, I could be a little more precise and use them on different lines. But, but these three lines of code, again, I'm specifying the statistics. I'm telling SAS what variables I want SAS to calculate these statistics for, and I'm telling it to run. At the end of each line of code, I have a semicolon. I highlight uh, the lines of code that I want to run. I click Run, and there I have it. So look, out of 450 firms in CompuStat, uh, the, these are just 450 firms that I have here, uh, 2019 financial statements, the average firm has an ROE of 13%, an ROA of 6.5%, and a profit margin of 8.2%, right? The median firm, so uh, I'm, this isn't a statistics tutorial, but, but hopefully you understand what the median is. Uh, the median ROE is 11.22%. The median ROA is 5.66. The median profit margin is 6.22, right? And I have the distribution. I can look and see if that distribution is is relatively normal. Uh, for those of you who might be more interested in statistics, I could look at. I have the standard deviation. You can see that here. I've calculated the standard deviation. Those that are interested in statistics will know what that is. I might also calculate the skewness to determine the normality of these variables, uh, the kurtosis, right? So within the PROC mean statement, SAS has a whole bunch of statistics. This is not an exhaustive list. SAS can do a whole bunch of stuff here, calculating statistics for these variables. Right? Here's skewness and, and kurtosis is. Remember, a skewness of zero means that these variables are distributed normally. 
Uh, the statisticians that are listening uh, can, can already tell that there was going to be positive skewness in ROE because the mean ROE was greater than the median. So I have positive skewness uh, and some positive kurtosis. Uh, I won't go into the definitions of what skewness and kurtosis is, but uh, those that are analyzing data uh, ought to know uh, some of these statistics. So this is uh, the PROC means or the means procedure in SAS. Another uh, statement, uh, procedure statement that is common that might be helpful is uh, you might want to examine the correlation okay, between the variables that you're looking at. Data, data two. Okay. So, so here I want to examine the correlation. And maybe instead of just looking at the statistics of the profitability ratios, let's look at the correlation between profitability, liquidity, debt ratios, and efficiency ratios. So again, the procedure statement is PROC core. That's calculating correlation coefficients. Uh, again, you'll recall that correlation coefficients are bound between negative 1 and 1. I'm pointing SAS to the data set equals data 2 which is my SAS data set consisting of these financial statements. And the variables I want to look at are ROE, ROA, profit margin, uh, current ratio, quick ratio, cash ratio. Uh, I, I've defined what these ratios are. You can see what the ratios are here uh, in this data step, but I defined what these ratios were in the previous uh, tutorial. Maybe look at the debt to equity ratio, the debt to assets ratio, and the efficiency ratios. Okay, so what this is going to do, it's going to generate a correlation matrix examining the cross sectional correlation between each of these variables for the 450 firms. Uh, by the way, this procedure also provides me some simple statistics, the mean standard deviation, minimum, maximum. Okay. And so you can see a few things here. Notice that ROE is positively correlated, heavily correlated with ROE. That shouldn't come as a surprise. It's also heavily correlated with profit margin. That also shouldn't come as a surprise. But notice something that I think is interesting here is you have uh, liquidity ratios, short-term solvency ratios, that are negatively correlated with ROE, but positively correlated with ROA. And uh, this isn't really correlated with profit margin, but uh, let, let me explain here. So these are the correlation coefficients that are going to be bound between negative 1 and 1. And underneath each of these correlation coefficients, these are p-values. Again, this isn't a statistics tutorial, but a p-value tells me how confident I am that this correlation coefficient is different than 0. Okay. In other words, I'm 1 minus this p-value confident that this correlation coefficient is statistically different than 0. So uh, 1 minus 0 0.0146. I'm about 98.5% confident that the current the correlation between ROE and the current ratio is significantly negative. Okay. Look here, I am 99.99%, at least 99.99% confident that the correlation between ROE and ROA is different than zero. Uh, also, a couple of things here. Uh, ROE is positively correlated with both debt to equity and debt to assets ratio. And it's also correlated with total asset turnover, but uncorrelated, kind of, with fixed asset turnover. The reason I say uncorrelated is the p value is 0.3267. So I'm only 77% confident that this correlation coefficient is is uh, different than zero and I need to be in the 90s I need to be 95 or 99 percent confident that those things are different than zero uh, let's see a couple of other things the debt to asset and debt to equity ratio are highly correlated that shouldn't come as a surprise also notice that in this correlation uh, matrix I have the diagonal right ROE and ROE are perfectly correlated I hope you didn't need to SAS to uh, calculate that correlation coefficient for you. Uh, but anyway, this might be important. These are Pearson correlation coefficients for the 450 firms that we have, and it tells me how the variables are correlated. Now, this procedure, I, what I can also do is I can also calculate a different way of calculating the correlation coefficient called the Spearman correlation. Uh, Spearman correlation 
uh, basically is just a, a slightly different formula that provides a ranking of these things. So it basically accounts for the rank of the correlations. Uh, again, this isn't a statistics tutorial, but you can see that the correlation coefficients change uh, uh, slightly. Uh, when I calculate instead of the Pearson correlation coefficients, the Spearman correlation coefficients. So this is uh, these are th hopefully the last two tutor tutorials. Last two tutorials have taught you the difference between data statements, what you can do with inside data statements like calculate new variables of interest, and procedure statements which are canned pre-specified procedures that SAS recognizes. Proc means and proc correlation are are two. Uh, commonly used procedures that allow somebody to analyze initially uh, what the data looks like in SAS.